Welcome to the Best of U.S. Investors to Regular Guys show. I'm Trent, and this is Mark over here, and he's out in his cornfields there in the big state of Nebraska, and I'm over here waiting for NVIDIA to happen. But today, we're going to talk about Jerome Powell, the chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve, and his speech, and Mark's going to give us a take on where he thinks all this interest rate thing is going. So let's get going. I don't know if it's a take or it's a rant, but uh, we've been through this before and I want you to pipe in because you've seen the same thing that, that I've seen. But, you know, last Friday I've, I returned from Jackson Hole, so no more mountains behind me. So I'm back in the, in the confines of the safe flyover you know, district of the middle of America again in the cornfields where I belong. <clears throat> so we'll talk about NVIDIA later, but that, you know, it is the week of NVIDIA, but I, last yes. week was Friday when Powell came out, and, you know, and, and gave his little speech in, uh, in uh, Jackson Hole, you know, it was right at the end of the day on Friday. So we didn't really get up to talk about it all that much. So, you know, what he did is he, he signaled, and this was a total, turnaround okay he signals the central bank will cut its interest rates in september in the september meeting uh and that was during his speech in, in, in jackson hole you know uh he noted that the u.s labor market is cooling quickly following the softer jobs report from july if you remember mm -hmm. okay and the downward revision to payrolls this week okay which was well last week last week i'll also noted i'm living i my air conditioner went out. I'm still living through the weekend horrors. <laughs> um, I'll also know that the FOMC has gained further confidence that inflation is slowing to the central bank's 2% target, warranting a clear view as time to adjust monetary policy to less restrictive conditions. Okay, so they want you to believe that this 2% is like inflation has gone away. Now we're back to normal. Okay, um, but that's just the rate of inflation rising is slowing but we're only at what 2.93 percent still rising every right. month it's rising okay and this is on top of where we've already been since 2021 so food prices are up 21 percent from the start of 2021 okay we're still rising you know three right. percent month to month shelter costs are up 21.6 percent we're still rising you had your uh, tax statement your property taxes or your insurance for your house come in you know, it's probably rising more than that. Still, we're still rising. Okay. Right. Higher um, energy prices are up 32%. I, you know, I haven't seen it gone back to under two bucks a gallon, which is where it was, you know, four years ago. So when you look at it, higher prices are really devastating. You know, they're like a tax on lower and middle income Americans because they tend to spend more of their, their paycheck on necessities. And they have less flexibility to save money because their entire check goes to expenses, okay? Mm -hmm. Or they put it on the credit card. So they can't really save or be in the, the market. So they really don't care about the market because they don't have any uh, extra discretionary money. They're just worrying of, you know, living day to day, okay? Right. So considering that our economy is driven by consumer spending by 70%, uh, that's an important fact. If, if consumers start to uh, stop spending, our economy will slow it down. But I found what was interesting is all of a sudden, uh, the labor market became the, the issue for uh, the, the Fed chair. Out of all these meetings, they've never really focused. And they have a dual mandate, full employment, you know, and inflation. And they were always like, oh, you know, the market's not hot. You know, it's doing good. And, you know, we have a, a great market, labor market. So but what he said was really kind of striking. He said, we do not seek or welcome further labor market cooling, which means since the time they left their, their, their FOMC meeting minutes out to the time of this Jackson Hole conference, not only did, it, did the unemployment go up, it went up from 4.1% to 4.3%. So it went up two tenths. He's starting to see employment, you know, get out of control. Okay. Right. And I'll tell you why that's important. Okay. So again, we do not seek or welcome further labor market cooling, which once again shows the importance of the U.S. jobs on September 6th, which is the next jobs report. So mark that on your calendar. Uh, 
And that may dictate the size of the move by the Fed because, you know, what are they going to do, 25 bases, 50, 75? Who knows? Because once right. again, the Fed is behind, you know, on this inflation. They haven't solved inflation. Everything is sky high. Housing is sky high. Everything's sky high. So they have not solved it. Right. Okay. So this whole ruse about inflation's back towards our target is ridiculous because people are still spending, you know, what they're spending and, and their paycheck has not come up uh, to match that. Which would, uh, in, which if it did, would create more inflation. Okay. Right. So he continued to note how the Fed's attention has shifted within its dual mandate. As it stated, the balance of risk to our mandates has changed and upside risk to inflation has diminished, which I think is f false. I think we're going to see more inflation. Okay. Downside risk to the employment have increased, which we've been talking about for months. Okay. Right. Uh, these reports, these these job reports, something was a little hinky in them, and now we're, we're seeing what's happening. So he further went on to say, and really weird because he didn't take any questions, he just walked off stage. We do not seek or welcome further cooling in the labor market, adding that the slowdown in the labor market was unmistakable. Okay, so it's like, oh, wow, where did this come from? <laughs> we know? did look at that report. Yeah, absolutely. And we're like, you and I, in the two regular guys, and anyone who has friends, uh, who have been laid off know that that there's been layoffs, okay? And right. they always say, what well, you know, a recession is when your neighbor gets laid off and a depression is when you get laid off. Laid off. <laughs> okay, well, be careful. So if you remember that a couple of weeks ago, the Bureau of Labor Statistics revised uh, revision showed that the U.S. job growth for the year ending March 2024 was weaker than weaker than initially reported. Okay, with 818,000 fewer jobs added, 818,000, just under a million jobs that weren't there that they reported, that you and I look at every week, every month, that come out and affect the stock market, pushing the stock market up because the economy is resilient. We have jobs. Now we don't. How much of the stock market is up and how much does it have to come back down to meet, you know, that 818,000 jobs that aren't there? So okay. this is a significant downward adjustment. It suggests that the job market was cooling more rapidly than previously thought. Okay, well, duh. Okay, so this results, uh, the results magnify the concerns that the U.S. labor market is no longer resilient. Yeah, uh, to restrictive interest rates following July soft and expected payroll count, strengthening the case for the Fed to deliver an aggressive rate cut this year. It marks the largest downward revision since 2009. Okay, well, if you go look at history, rate cuts in history, have not affected unemployment. They have not made uh, the employment rate come down. Okay, it hasn't. Okay, so what good is that really going to do? And considering that consumers are 70% of the U.S. economy and the consumers aren't spending and, in fact, are cutting back on purchases, doesn't look very good for the employment rate for me going forward. So you look at the low end of retail fast food. McDonald's, Burger King, Starbucks, Wendy's, Taco Bell, they all saw sales decline more than 30% from July 2023 to July 2024, okay? And that was uh, analyzed by a company called Bridget, which, which analyzes millions of transactions uh, who have connected with their bank accounts so they can see what people are buying, and it's gone down uh, 30%. So people aren't even spending on McDonald's, okay, right. for God's sake, or Wendy's or Taco Bell. So let's see, what else aren't they spending on? Home buyers, okay? Home buyers in the U.S. are getting cold feet as prices in homes remained elevated, backing out of deals at record rates and pushing up the supply of available homes. Active home listings rose to a record 13.7% year over year in July, according to a report from Redfin. That increase is mostly due to a record 59,000 canceled home purchase agreements during the month as home buyers face higher costs and what they call economic uncertainty, which to me means, I don't know if I'm gonna have a job, Right. okay? So again, we're cutting back on food, we're cutting back on housing, we're cutting back on a lot of things. But I just talked to you, we were talking about your anniversaries tomorrow. Right. We were talking about going out to eat, and like, maybe I'll cut back on that, because yeah. it's gonna cost me a hundred bucks. I said, you know, you used to you used to, uh, to go to coffee shops and, and do your, you know, your, work. your YouTubes. And and I said, do you do that anymore? What'd you tell me? No, no, it's ten, at least 10, at least $10 every time I walk into a coffee shop. 
Well, you do that five, six days a week, that's 60 bucks. Well, start multiplying that. It gets ridiculous. And I'm like, the reason I went to coffee shops was atmosphere. It changed. It was creative. It it was you know encouraging and the whole bit. And now it's like it's too expensive. And I think everybody's yeah. experiencing that. So let's you know? yeah, and it's and that's what they said. It's a thirty percent cut, and you're one of those thirty percent that yeah. aren't going in anymore. Right. So take that and multiply it by how many people feel the way you feel. You know, yeah, and that's what we're seeing in the economy, and that's just Starbucks. Okay, your coffee. Okay. Yeah. And, and think, think about, about the all the things. local coffee shops. I mean, there's yeah. like a dozen of them in my area. They all are fighting for customers right now and yeah. they're getting crushed. You know? And how do you know they're getting crushed? Because now you're getting ads 30% off uh, airfare, right. 30%, 50% off buy one room, get it for next night free. I right. didn't get those a year ago. No. So let me, I want to share something. So okay. um, just down the road for me is a neighborhood that was, St. Joe, who is the largest landowner in the panhandle of Florida, clear cutted this whole area. And they started about two years ago, I believe. And they opened a section of other lots up and they started at a half million bucks. And it was a lottery system. And they sold them out. Um, I knew one guy who's a friend of his bought one and within 24 hours flipped it for a million bucks. Okay. So now their home's being built. And the minimum price home in there right now is about four and a half million dollars. Okay, here's my thinking. This weekend, I was like, I'm just going to drive back there and see what these homes are all about. Number one, they're on top of each other. They're four, 4,500 to 5,000 to 6,000 square feet. So they're gigantic homes, right? Wow. And I'm driving in and there are two open house signs pointing into the neighborhood. And know? I get to thinking, if I'm a real estate agent and my clientele buys $5 million homes, do you think I'm running, I do open houses? No. You buy a $5 million home, you have a relationship with a real estate agent. You don't go to open house. You do private viewings. If you're selling a $5 million home for a, for a client, you're not doing open houses. You're doing private showings. Because your your Rolodex is giant, you know, full of people buying five million dollar homes, but now they're running open houses, and the reason is is because those who buy five million dollar homes are getting squeezed. Their businesses are getting squeezed, and they're like, "I'm not buying a five million dollar home." So you have these real estate agents, and there's probably about fifteen homes in there. Um, most of them are sold, but there's probably about four or five that are for sale or in the midst of being built, but have for sale signs. And these people can't get them. They can't sell them because the rich people are now feeling the pain that McDonald's told us about the poor, you know, the lower income people. I hate yeah. saying poor, but some days I feel poor in this world, uh, you know, and so well, I will really, do. Our purchasing yeah. power is gone, you know, and inflation's up. Exactly. And so I look at this and I go, this started down here or down here and is now hitting the higher echelon, higher income demographic. Absolutely. It's starting to pay. You know, they're yep. starting to get squeezed. Yep. And so, so why is this happening? Well, again, people are fearful of losing their jobs. Even when you buy $5 million homes, which... Two regular guys like us don't have, no. you know, I don't have a five million. I don't have a five million. Nor do I want one because I, I'm thinking of the property tax on that here would be. Would I'm suck. thinking of fixing the AC system in a $5 million home. Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah. but, so, you know, when people are fearful of losing their jobs, you know, uh, and consumers have spent to the end of their credit limits, like on credit cards. Credit card delinquencies up as well as automobile repossessions, which we can go in those reports and we have talked about them. You know, mm -hmm. banks have tightened lending standards, you know. Right. Uh, that's where that's where the economy is going. So I've always said the third leg of, you know, our the downfall of where we're going to be in this economy is going to be unemployment. And so mm -hmm. you just go and look. I mean, companies are laying people off. So here are some leading companies announcing layoffs this year. Okay. And, and think about this and okay, so you know, you're, you'll say, well, companies always lay off or you know, they go through it, but 
think about how many people are being laid off and then think about how many headlines do I see that XYZ company is hiring 20,000 people or hiring this many? You don't. There aren't. Okay, yeah. so city, 20,000 layoffs. United Parcel Service, 12,000. Sam's Club, 11,000. Unilever, 11,000. This all this year. Tesla, 11,000. Cisco, 4,000. Bell Media, 4,800. Siemens Energy, 4,100. Deutsche Bank, 3,500. Stellantis, 2,450. Paramount Global, 2,000. TIAA Bank, 1,000. NRC, 800. Intel, 15,000. American Electric Power, 15,000. Intuit, 18,000 or 1,800. American Electric Power is 1,500. Intuit, 1,800. But still, this adds up. So if you have that many people being dumped in the labor market, mm -hmm. where are they going? What are they doing? Okay. Especially well, we haven't at seen that it. income level. Yeah. I mean, we I'm, haven't seen it in the labor market or in the labor reports. Well, that's because some of these people get uh, severances up to four to six months. You know, we're going to see that lag. Right. You know, but when you come home and or you go to work and you look to the left and you look to the right, it's like office space that the bobs have come in and eliminated your job on either side. You yeah. become scared and all of a sudden you become a model employee, you know, right? because you don't want to lose your $5 million house or your $50,000 or whatever, you know, because most Americans live paycheck, paycheck to paycheck and even people at higher cost levels do that. Yeah. So, so what, it's, what, what is happening? What are we seeing? We're seeing with this increase of prices, people aren't spending, getting laid off. Well, the economy is slowing. Okay. It's just, it is. Okay. The U S economy is, is, is experiencing the slowdown. The recent data shows that the economy grew at an annual rate of 1.3% in the first quarter of 2024, which is a significant decrease from 3.4% growth rate in the last quarter of 2023. Okay. And I think we're having a, uh, we're going to have a, 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 a GDP report this week. We'll see what happens. But when you dig into those reports, you see that majority of our GDP is government spending. Okay. Yeah. It's not for the private sector. Okay. And there's so many reports you can go through and just, you know, I see, I, I see way more reports that are pointing in the wrong direction than are pointing in the right direction. I try to look at everything. Uh, but, you know, all you hear on CNBC is joy and happiness and, you know, but it's not. Okay. Maybe to those people it is, but it's not. So right. what's happening? So Fed Powell looks at this and says, oh, my God, you know, I, I got to tell everyone that I've solved inflation, which he hasn't. We know he hasn't. Go to the grocery store, go to get gas, you know, try to sell your house. You know, get, uh, So to stimulate the economy, he, he now looks at we're going to, you know, we got inflation solved. You know, we didn't get the 2 percent, but 3.9 is good enough. We're going to cut we're going to cut rates so that, you know, we stop unemployment right here at 4.3 percent, which isn't really going to happen. But historically. What happens uh, when the Fed starts to cut rates is is recession. OK, and yeah. I, I personally believe uh, we're in a recession and, and it, not everyone has been in a recession, but it started, like you said, Trent, at the bottom of the economic ladder. And now yeah. you're starting to see it go to the top and just I'm going to share this chart, which we've seen before. OK, and this isn't something I made up or Trent made up. This comes from the Federal Reserve. Okay, and this is the Fed funds effective rate. And you can see every time, okay, here we go. This is these lines, these gray lines are recessions. Every time the Fed starts to cut, we go into recession. Here we have a top, goes sideways, start to cut, recession. Sideways, start to cut, recession. Here in 70s, the early 70s, actually went up, caused reflation, cut, recession, cut, recession, plateau, cut, recession, plateau, cut, recession, plateau, cut, recession. This was the uh, this was the pandemic. We had a small little recession. Here we are right now, and uh, what we're looking for is this is starting to go down, and you can see what we're going to get. And this is just history, okay? I'm not yeah. making this up. This happens all the time, okay? And so, if you believe in histories, and you can say, well, it's not going to happen this time, you know, or it's it won't happen this time, but why? You know, if you're a betting man. You know, everything's lining up, you know, the, yeah. the inverted yield curve. OK, it's now re, re, re inverting or whatever you want to call it. Right. Another side of recession. The SOM rule that came out on unemployment. Another sign. Just too many, too many signs are are 
are moving in that direction. So where do I, and I hate to be the Debbie Downer, but I've been through this before when I was younger in the seventies and it doesn't happen, but I think, I think we're heading towards stagflation. Okay. And, and, and what is, I mean, stagflation is a, is an economic condition that is characterized by the combination of three factors. And I'm looking at the three factors. I'm looking at what happens, what's been happening. The first factor is slowing economic growth. Okay. We've just saw that the GDP is coming down. So right. this is often accompanied by high unemployment rates, indicating a lack of economic activity. Okay. The second factor is high inflation. Okay. Prices of goods and services rise significantly, reducing the purchasing powers of consumers. Well, we have that. Okay. The third, and this is the last the leg of the stool, is high unemployment, where a, a significant portion of the workforce is unable to find jobs, leading to decreased consumer spending, which we're seeing in a further economic slowdown. And the last leg in this stool really is unemployment. So if you look at things the way I do, and dusting off my economics degree that I got from fine uh, land grant university here in the middle of the country, uh, it looks like stagflation to me. Uh, and if we get into that, you know, after recession, it's going to be a lot tougher than a recession. And part of the reason that we're having this is because we keep kicking the can down the road and we continue to spend like drunken monkeys, okay, uh, in, in the government and interest rates have gone up, causing a trillion dollars of annual interest payments a year, hundred or yeah, trillion dollars every hundred hundred days we're, we're borrowing or spending uh, and we don't bring that money in. So, you know, the chickens are gonna have to come to roost sometime and it just looks like, you know, they're trying to hold this thing together until November. That's just my rant as a regular guy who sits in a cornfield waiting for it, you know, to, to be husked and harvested and sent to the cows to eat so that you can have your steaks and hamburgers or, you know, veg <laughs> vegetable meat, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that's what I always see it. What do you think of my rant? I think you're right. I think um, I think people don't understand the whole interest rate um lowering and raising of interest rates number one number two the 2.9 percent inflation rate i think is misunderstood that's as you said earlier that is 2.9 percent increase on existing month over month inflation okay so if inflation's hypothetically let's say 10 percent it's increasing only 2.9 percent versus what it was at four percent or something in a nine six months nine yeah. percent okay yeah. so it's coming it's slowing but inflation still is is increasing and if you look at true inflation that's the um cost of rising goods and services but also take into account your buying power and that is typically what uh i think it's you know what 80 80 cents on the dollar so, you know, 20%. If even. Yeah. If even. yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, in what I would call true inflation is about probably 17 to 20%. So if you're not, if you don't, if they're not, in, but they don't recognize it that way, you know, and they're not going to tell it to you that way, because if you knew that you would just blow up, you would be voting everybody in Washington out right now. Right. But all this has to do with their spending bender they have been on for years and it's the borrowing of money borrowing borrowing spending money like drunken sailors and it's it's catching up and i think to me the whole fed lowering rates that is the rate for which they lend money to prime dealers and special you know in in Thanks. nation yeah. states and stuff like that right yeah. so so it's at five you know 0.33 percent right now let's say they lower it you know uh 50 basis points so that brings it down to what five point or uh four point what eight something or eight three three or something like that what does that mean to you and i nothing and deadly squad nothing yep. and then here's the other element of this We've always talked for almost two years now, when they started raising rates, that number doesn't translate into our, you know, affect us for six to nine months. 
So all those raises they did are still trickling into the system. So for them to actually, in my opinion, make a difference, they have to cut rates probably two, 300 basis points right off the top today and drop it to counterbalance that those rates that have increased and to really make a significant move. If they were doing that, all of a sudden you would see this stock market go through the roof temporarily. Look at, I mean, look at, NVIDIA would you be just a million is, dollars. What you just said is true. They never stop. They just they don't go down like a quarter point. They just down. They just down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, it's, it's never a quarter point. It's like a it's like going down a mountain on skis. You yeah. Know? I mean, for them to make a significant dent in this, in my opinion, right now, they have to basically eliminate all of the rate cuts, rate hikes, plus more to get this thing to pivot fast. But you're talking about a freighter. You're talking about a freighter trying to turn on a dime and they don't turn on a dime. It takes forever to turn a freighter around. And that's what we are right now. I think, you know, the biggest thing that could, two things could happen, cut rates in half, go from 5.33 and cut it to two and a half, whatever. And then the uh, Janet Yellen comes out and says, we're uh, we're cutting spending. We're not borrowing any more money, and we're gonna we're gonna reduce our spending by a trillion dollars right now. It Every really hundred dump, days, we're cutting would really trillion. dump everything. Yeah, holy shit! But that's yeah. the thing is, if you want to reset this system and get it back on course, drastic events have to happen. Unfortunately, there is casualties in that when you do something but, and that's and that's what the free market system was set to do if you fail you fail and you reset okay you don't keep right. keep bail you don't keep bailing out a failing company or a failing entity you know yeah. which is what we've been doing you know too big to fail well who the hell determined that okay they yeah. let us fail two regular guys we don't pay our bills we fail right, right. Who, who who comes and you know bails us out nobody 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 okay. no i and i, uh, I think I think that's why all of this hoopla about lowering rates, I think there's a 70% chance I'll lower rates 25 basis points at this meeting. I think it's it maybe a little higher. Um, but he if he's gonna really turn the boat, turn the freighter, he's he's gotta really be aggressive. But the thing is, that doesn't mean anything to you and I. If I'm a business owner, that doesn't all of a sudden inject capital into my business to expand and grow. That's how the economy yeah. grows is my ability to borrow money at a reasonable rate and then invest that money into things that will outrun the interest rate plus create profit. And then it, it creates that, but that's well, not, in lower, my opinion, you, not going to happen. You lower interest rates to stimulate the economy. I thought our economy is doing great. That's what we've been told. It's been, so why would we lower interest rates? What does it do? To, so now you and I can borrow money. Businesses can borrow money. But we already know lending standards are tight. No one's, no one's lending money. We've, we have people in our, in our Discord, in, in the Platinum channel, who have businesses. Now, all they do is they go through the motions, take your application, and say, thanks, denied. You yeah. know, they're not opening up. And let's just say that, that the consumer did want to go lend. They're they're tapped out on their credit. Who's going to loan to somebody that's tapped out on their credit card? And their car's getting you know deported away, you right. know, to, to the to the repo lot. You yeah. know, it's not it's, happening. No, it isn't. And I think that's this affects everything. It affects the whole mm -hmm. evolution of this technology revolution we are in with artificial intelligence. You're starting to see that being strained. Um, individuals. They're not going out to eat as much. They're not, you know, they're going to the grocery store and just getting really the basics. And they're not spending a lot of money. Um, and it's not just, you know, people who make less than $60,000 a year. It's people who make a quarter million a year are starting to go to Walmart now. Absolutely. More we often. saw that in the earnings report. Exactly. And so I think this is one of those environments where you go, okay, Mark, so let's say they do lower interest rates. And let's say they should, you know, cut 50 basis points off. Where, where does that help? Where can I go to with my money capital? Where can I put my, my wealth and protect it right now? Will that, would that be the bond market? 
would that be just put it in my mattress where lowering rates how does that translate into an opportunity well i mean i don't give advice here neither do you we're right. just two regular guys so don't take it as advice but you know we we've been the one good thing that's happened over the last couple of years is you know, we've been able to gain some yield out of treasury, short-term treasuries. The yield curve's inverted. Now, if you look, I mean, we were up to 5.5, 5.6%, and you were getting CDs that were paying, you know, 5.4. Now you look at it, we're at 5.1% on treasuries, you know, and, and 4.85 on CDs. So that's not because of the Fed lowering interest rates. They have it. That's because of the 10-year. Okay. Yeah. The bond market tells us what's going on. The Fed has very little effect on mortgage rates, okay, or what you pay for your car. It's the 10-year bond yield. And you and yeah. I have talked about that a million times, okay? Yeah. So the Fed is basically a show. So if if they start lowering rates, history says we're going to go into a recession. We go into a recession, we're going to see the stock market fall because companies are, not, are laying off and they're not profitable because they're not selling anything anymore. They're going to have to cut their prices. We could go into deflation. We can go into stagflation. If we go into stagflation, you're screwed. You know, yeah. a lot of people will go to the long-term bonds, the TLT, the 30-year bonds. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, if you have 30-year bonds and said I bought some at 4.6 percent, you believe that uh, interest rates are going to go down, which we've been seeing. Okay, and then the 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 price on your bond, the 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 price someone's willing to pay you for a 30-year or 29 and a half-year bond at 4.6 percent. That they can they can buy on the open or they can buy as a new issue for 3.2 percent they're going to mm -hmm. pay you above par to get that you know 29 years of of interest right uh, and then that's how that works so the tlt is one etf you know that can help you do that yeah people um, go to gold people go to gold people go to silver uh they go to utilities okay utilities pay dividends people have to pay your your, your utility bills, people, they go to uh, consumer staples, which are, you know, things we need, you know, companies that produce consumer staples, they're called defensive stock. Uh, people may go to financials, you know. Uh, and so, you know, there are places to go, but it's not going to be like before where everything goes up, you know, right. 100, 100%, you know, and 39% a day. And, and we're going to see, and I've already seen in the charts, our, our tech sector is, is waiting for NVIDIA and it's starting to roll. You know, I don't think they're very excited about yeah. NVIDIA. You know? I, so we'll talk about that probably more tomorrow. Yeah. We've already talked, but, uh, you know, just be careful. We'll talk tomorrow about NVIDIA. And, but, Car you know, so Kerry's so doing a uh, video series on NVIDIA. He put one out this morning. Uh, he's put together some research on it as well. Um, tomorrow, well, Wednesday, well, you and I and Carrie will be discussing where we see NVIDIA's price targets are. We both have that three be, different perspectives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, so, yeah, NVIDIA and the NVIDIA reports Wednesday night, which we'll probably do a video. We may record a video and put it out late Wednesday night. We'll see if we can put make that happen. But I, I may fly out to headquarters just to be there and, and enjoy you should. it. Yeah, I you probably and, will. The three, yeah. We should get Jensen to come. Yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm just waiting for, I'm just waiting for this corn to harvest, you know, to ripen up so we can harvest. It's not <laughs> exactly. there yet. Not there yeah. yet. So, but yeah, I think uh, everything is pinned against this, you know, one company who represented last week eight percent of the S and P 500's daily volume. Um, that's a lot being put on the shoulders of one company that CEO and C level executives have only been selling shares of the company for the last, what, eight months? Um, yeah. It's not a confidence builder, if you ask me. And I think well, this is top, where- On top of that, they got production problems with their newest chip that right. they say are three months out. And they, you know, they've known this for a while. That's why they sold their shares, you know? And yeah. and and I just look at the other stocks and you know their customers and I'm looking at, there's not very much excitement this week. And they, they know too, because if- if they're buying those chips, they know that, okay, they probably know that production, and I'm just saying what, from my experience being in purchasing, it's probably more than three months out and they're probably getting the notices. You're not going to get this until whenever, right. you know? So 
but anyway, when you think about that, those chips were already priced in to the price of NVIDIA for sales this year, which aren't going to happen. Okay, so right there, I'm like, okay, that's a flag for me. If you're, yeah. you know, if you're a fundamental you know, investor and you look at fundamentals, that's what I would be looking at. Yeah. I look at charts and the charts are telling me the same thing. But here's the other element of this that people I don't think think a lot about is corporations borrow money on a short term basis for production uh, to, you know, fund production to buy supplies, goods, expansion. And if they were borrowing money two, three years ago, they're refinancing that debt if they haven't paid it off, which most of them don't. They just roll it. They're pay, they're paying a higher. They're looking at paying a higher price tag for that borrowed money, which then eats away at uh, at their earnings per share growth. Um, and that I think is a lot of these AI companies or tech companies that are rolling into is hey. You know, I hope the Fed lowers rates really soon. Maybe they'll cut them in half, you know, 100, you know, take 50 percent off the table so we can refinance this debt that we're carrying that has been all about this AI expansion. So um, well, that's, that, that goes out to a lot of industries like commercial real estate, too. Look oh, what's happening gosh. there. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. And I think yeah. that's that's the thing we people don't think about. But what the market does is they do think about this. The bond market, you know, I look at the bond market, it's been telling us probably since April, March, April, it's not good. It's not good. So you better, you know, and when yields go down, the value of bonds go up. And that's all we have seen since since March in the 10 year, the the uh, 30 year. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of. Uh, who knows, we maybe it will probably get a pop when they lower rates. Uh, depending on how much they lower, we'll get a pop for about probably into the election. And then after that, I mean, the numbers are the numbers. They are well, what they traditionally, are. Traditionally, you'll see it drop after, you know, it'll pop and then you'll see the market drops after. Yeah. Then you'll see what happens. We'll, we'll probably float into a recession. I think we're already there. Oh, yeah. From the data I see, they just don't want to say it uh, because their 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 marker is two quarters of GDP, you know, a negative GDP. Well, government can pop that up with government spending. We're spending again, you know, to keep that GDP up. It's it's not that high. Okay. Right. It's not a healthy GDP and the government can't do it forever, which is us taxpayers. We got to pay all that back. Right. Right. Well, tomorrow or Wednesday will be interesting. I think that yep. is a pivot point. Um, they would have, you think about that, they would have to come out with mind-blowing earnings and then their guidance which is where a lot of this you know is you know sitting on is has to be like so positive for for this nvidia to make a higher high uh to you know go through the roof i just don't in this environment i don't see it happen and if and then honestly they wouldn't be selling shares of their company you know the c-level execs wouldn't be selling shares of the company if they believe that were going to happen, you know, they're cashing out. They've been on this ride for a long time and they're like, we're, we're ringing the bell. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mark. Well, you got anything else? Uh, nope. I think we've ranted enough and um, All right. just be careful out there. There's still opportunities. We find them in swing trading and on our watch list. And, you know, holy sure cow, you're... we sent out the Sunday platinum letter. Newsletter. And you had your charts of interest. And I'm like, dude, there's 14 charts on here. This <laughs> newsletter is going to be like scroll, scroll, scroll. But they're yeah. all great ideas. They're all great ideas. And you so, have to apply them to your own personal trading plan. I mean, I, I come up with charts that look like setups, you know, that and uh, sometimes they go up, sometimes they go down. But you, you apply them to your your risk factor and your trading plans. And, and for the most part, uh, we've done really well. Yeah, we've had a. Very good year on the swing trading. Um, check us out at www.bus13.ai. That's www.bus13.ai. That's our abbreviated URL. You can also go to bestofusinvestors.com and end up at the same place. We have a 14-day free trial for the Platinum Channel. Check it out. 
Uh, we may be introducing a new program here soon. It's more of an entry-level plan, so keep an eye on that. But in the meantime, make sure you're protecting your wealth. Make sure you're paying attention. Be curious, ask a lot of questions, and always, always live loud. We'll see ya. And cut. Cut. <laughs> There's your giggle again. <laughs> uh...